I'm Heather from GroundedApproach.com. I'm a nutritionist and a GAPS practitioner, and I absolutely love the GAPS diet. I talk to everyone about the GAPS diet. I think it is the best foundational healing diet. Whether you want to do alternative therapies, some other different things on top of it, I feel like GAPS, in my experience, is the best foundation. Um, and one of the reasons for that is it heals the gut lining, which so many people have inflamed gut linings. You know, growing up, we have tons of antibiotics. We have chlorine and fluoride in our water. We take the birth control pill. We eat a refined diet. I'm just, maybe you're someone that didn't grow up like that, but that's how I grew up. Refined diet, sugar, coke, high fructose corn syrup. All of these things are so irritating to the gut lining. They're not natural foods. They're not natural really anything. And when they irritate it and inflame it over a long period of time, we get little holes in our gut lining. And then when that happens, these undigested food particles start leaking into the bloodstream. And where does the blood go? It goes to the brain. And um, you can just have a ton of really, really bad responses. So if your gut's unhealthy, it doesn't just manifest in, you know, colitis or IBS um, or food intolerances. It can manifest in mental health problems. It can manifest in depression, anxiety, inability to sleep. It can manifest in autoimmune disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, uh, yeah, just insane fatigue, things like that, unexplained muscle pain, unexplained neurological pain, because the issue is your gut, you're not digesting food, it's leaking into your bloodstream, you're not getting the nutrition, you're not getting the vitamins, and your body's just irritated and inflamed. So I absolutely love the Apps Diet. It helped me so much 12 years ago when I did it. Um, it's helped my husband tremendously. I've seen I love working with people. I've seen so many cool things. Chronic migraines get resolved, um, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, autism, autism. Kids that are five years old that have never spoken in their life, they've never said mommy or daddy, get on gaps and they start talking. And some are learning new words every week. Others, it's, actually I had one who was every day he was saying new words. Five years old, never spoke in his life. Um, others, it's not that easy, but still to have your child all of a sudden say, mommy, daddy, after never hearing that their entire life, and all of a sudden they're sleeping through the night better and they're slowly progressing and you know you're on the right track. I just find it to be the most rewarding work in the world. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. And one of my main motivations for doing these YouTube videos, I'm a mom, I'm a nutritionist, I'm busy, my husband works, we are busy people, but one of my main motivations for this and for my Instagram and everything is to support people who want to do gaps on their own, but they're confused. And maybe you're working with a practitioner, maybe you legitimately can't afford one, but even if you are working with a practitioner, it's likely that in between you know, appointments, you are having a million questions. So my goal is to support women that are caretaking for their children or people who are doing gaps on their own and they just feel stuck. So I wanna try to give as much information in these little short videos that might help you to really like get over that plateau and start moving forward again or it might resolve some issues or just clear things up, make it simple. And I wanna make gaps beautiful as well because it's such a beautiful traditional diet. All the foods are um, absolutely delicious and traditional and these are what our great grandparents would have eaten. And so it's just fantastic. It's not just for the old frumpy mom with 17 kids who lives on a farm and milks her cow. It's for you and it's totally doable in every season of life. Um, it just takes a bit of commitment and willpower. So enough about gaps and enough about me and enough about YouTube. Um, today I wanted to talk about introducing fermented foods when you're on the GAPS diet because the more and more kind of new research that comes out with GAPS, things evolve. You know, things that were 20 years ago on the GAPS diet, like bone broth and stuff, has been fine-tuned to people's severity, their inflammation and everything. And now it's meat stock is the number one thing you um, introduce on the diet. So there's a lot of fine-tuning and a lot of things that go on. And as a practitioner, there's things that I've found that maybe weren't in the book or I haven't heard other people talk about, but seem to be really, really important. And one of those is introducing fermented veggies. Um, in the book, it talks about adding kraut juice as one of the first fermented foods. 
Now, some people read the book and the book is just a shell. It's just that basic, here's what you do, but everyone is so unique. Everyone has different levels of healing and damage. Everyone has a totally different microbiome. So some people might re react brilliantly to one thing and some might react a bit, you know, not so great to that thing. So um, when you're introducing fermented veggies, take it slow. I hear a lot people before they begin gaps, they're eating sauerkraut out of the jar with no problems. They don't notice anything. And then they begin the intro diet and all of a sudden they can't handle that. And it's like, it's like all of a sudden their body's healing and it, it just starts telling you, now that it's in a process of healing, it starts telling you, no, I can't handle that. I couldn't handle it back then, but I also couldn't really tell you in a way that um, would be acute and like big signaling. It was just kind of shown through everyday fatigue and hormonal problems. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, I think that's really important to know is that you need to start super, super slow depending on how bad your inflammation and your gut and your health problems are. So one thing that's recommended, and I definitely recommend this, is starting with a drop of sauerkraut juice, like in your mouth on its own once a day, and see how you go for a few days. Um, if there's any crazy symptoms or anything, you know, some people have never had fermented foods and their gut is totally out of whack. So one drop of sauerkraut juice can lead to like a crazy explosion of die off in their gut. So this is kind of where you have to just know yourself. Um, talk to a practitioner if you're working with them. They can really help you on this journey, but you don't want to just start smash, smashing a jar of sauerkraut on your first day on intro because it can lead to a lot of problems. So start slow. Some people legitimately have to do a drop of sauerkraut juice in a big glass of water and take one sip of that. And that's enough for them to um, have die off and feel crazy and get a lot of healing and a lot of, you know, gut um, change going on, which is all good. You're moving in the right direction. As long as you're moving in the right direction, it doesn't really matter how slow. So that's one thing is to really start slow. And the second thing is to get, <coughs> I'm sorry, to get creative with what you're introducing. So sauerkraut juice is great. It's a really great food. So is sauerkraut, tons of vitamin C cabbage, lots of good sulfur, um, really detoxing, especially for excess hormones and estrogens and stuff. But some people have a bit of mercury toxicity, potentially. If you have mercury amalgams, those are the silver fillings in your teeth, or even if your mom had them when she was pregnant with you, those are about 50% mercury and they off gas in your mouth. Now, that gets distributed in your body. And so some people have to be really, really careful with these high thiol foods, which I'll probably talk about in a different video, but I've had some clients who just seem to like, they're not progressing, they're not progressing. And then you really look at their, you take another look at their hair mineral analysis and you remove these thiol groups, which redistribute mercury. And it, then it, all of a sudden it's very clear that mercury is a problem. So as much as sauerkraut, cabbage, the cruciferous high sulfur vegetables are wonderful detoxifiers, they can be problematic if you have mercury toxicity. So if you're going into gaps and you have a lot of healing that needs to take place, like chronic fatigue, autism, something like that, and you have those mercury amalgams or you've had vaccines that you know have had thimerosal in them, um, or you've been exposed to just like even a breaking fluorescent light bulb or something like that, it can be really, really irritating. So sometimes it's good to start with one of the more mild fermented veggies that aren't the cruciferous thiol high sulfur foods. And this may be super confusing, but you can look into that yourself or I'll do another video on that. But um, one option is like pickle juice. So the, this is from lacto-fermented cucumbers that I made into pickles. So salt, water, pickles, cucumbers, actually, quite an intense one to make if you want them to get crunchy and really good. Um, I have a course that outlines really how to do, that's one thing that's included is um, the lacto-fermented pickles, but they're not a high thiol food, cucumbers. So you can do this without the garlic and that would be really safe to introduce if you know you have a lot of mercury exposure and you're, you're worried about like setting off those symptoms from mercury getting redistributed. Um, or lacto-fermented green beans are really safe to start out with. Lacto-fermented carrots, those are cultured carrot sticks. All of these non-cruciferous lacto-fermented veggies, you may have to look that up if you're not familiar with it, 
um, are a lot safer to introduce early on. And you can just start with the brine, that's the liquid. You don't have to add the actual green beans or carrots or anything, but just that brine. It's gonna have so much good probiotic activity and you're not gonna be irritated by any fiber, especially if you're sensitive to that. Um, and so you'll be getting all that good probiotic activity, but you might not have any issues like you would with the sauerkraut. And obviously the goal is to be able to introduce sauerkraut in these foods. We don't want it to just be like, oh, I can't have any of that. But if you're not progressing or just something's not working, that may be something to look into is that thiol sensitivity and sauerkraut might actually be a contributor. Um, so those are really good ways to start. Start slow and um, just be aware of what you're fermenting and do the juice really slow and yeah, just see how you feel. And when in doubt, talk to a practitioner. You can reach out to me if you have questions. Um, I'm good on email, groundedapproach at gmail.com. I'm good on Instagram. I'm not great on YouTube comments. I'm just gonna be honest. I'll try to get better at that. But um, if I can help you navigate that, I will absolutely try to do that. So I hope this is helpful for introducing fermented foods. You don't wanna be getting a ton of dye off. You don't wanna eat a whole jar of sauerkraut. You don't wanna eat a whole jar of fermented carrots or anything because it's probably just gonna be way too much. As all that good bacteria is going in, it's killing off bad bacteria and bad yeasts and pathogens and parasites, which is great, but it can have some unpleasant side effects and symptoms to that. So if you found this helpful, I'd love if you liked it or shared or commented anything, it would be super great. And I also have courses if you're like, okay, I need to learn way more about fermenting and you wanna culture veggies and you wanna learn fail-proof sauerkraut, fail-proof, crunchy, delicious lacto-fermented pickles, fermented garlic, cultured salsa, all of these things, I'll link it below with the code for 35% off. And that's called the sauerkraut add-on. And then I also have an add-on, it's just another name for a course, for bone broth and meat stock. How to introduce those with gaps, what type of bones to use, um, the progression, how to get gelatinous, which way to cook it, cook times, all of that, that is in the bone broth add-on. So I'll do 35% off on that as well beneath. And I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you do dive into gaps if you feel like it's for you or that you reach out um, because it's really, really, really an amazing diet. Hi, thanks for watching my video. You can feel free to comment or like below or you can follow me on Instagram or on my website.